commission meeting dated November 28th, 2018. Would you please stand and pledge allegiance to the flag? Thank you. May we have a roll call, Mr. Smith? Yes, Mr. Culpepper. Present. Dr. Denson. Present. Mr. Griffiths. Here. Mr. Huntington. Present. Mr. Martin. Present. Ms. Mia. Present. Mr. Willis. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum to conduct business this evening. Thank you. May I have approval of the agenda? I move for approval of agenda dated 11-28-2018. Uh, Second. Motion by Commissioner Willis, second by Commissioner Mia, that the agenda approved is written. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Don. Mr. Spence, any announcements or communication? Uh, I don't have any at this time. Okay. I have a uh, communication to address. Uh, good evening. To the viewers and to the attendees in present, the Southfield Planning Commission is a seven-member board that's committed and dedicated to this board. We are appointed by the mayor with the approval of the city council that acts in an advisory capacity to the council to make recommendations on tax amendments to the Southfield zoning ordinance, rezoning requests, special land use, site plan reviews, the Southfield master plan, and the capital improvement plan. All study meetings and the regular meetings are open to the public in accordance with act PA 267 of 1976. All meetings are held on Wednesday evenings at 6.30. Meeting agendas are posted the Friday evening before the next Wednesday meeting and are available for viewing at the cityofsoftfield.com. Copies of plans, text amendments, and the master plan, capital improvement plans are available for viewing at the planning department office. And also current projects can be viewed by using the online interactive pool tool of the planning department's homepage. The planning department projects online project. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the planning department at 248-796-4151. Hopefully this is uh, just an overview of the scope of what this commission does. So I hope you have a better idea of what our commitment and obligation is. Thank you. And with that, Mr. Spence, would you take the first item? Yes, thank you. Item. Yep. So your first item on the agenda this evening is PZR 17-0006. Uh, this is originally came into the Planning Commission as a straight rezoning right. request. Uh, and as you recall, we had some concerns about just going with the straight zoning on this particular piece of property. Uh, it's located on the north side of 12 Mile Road. Oh. We're between Franklin uh, and Case Roads. Uh, on the north side of 12 Mile. Uh, property itself is 0.59 acres of land and through the process with the Planning Commission and with staff, planning staff, uh, we decided that a conditional rezoning agreement would probably be the better way to go on this particular piece of property. Uh, conditional rezoning agreement uh, would be offered by the property owner and would be very specific from a condition standpoint on the types of uses that they would be looking to place on this particular piece of property. Uh, so within your packets, you do have a copy of uh, a draft of the uh, conditional rezoning agreement. Uh, and you will note uh, on the page, I believe it's the second page, um, the, the petitioner is limiting the uses of the property to professional office, uh, financial institutions, medical office, urgent care, or a veterinary clinic. Those would be the only uses that would be allowed, should this go through, uh, would be allowed on that particular piece of property for development. Uh, planning department is, is pretty comfortable with that. We think that those are uses that are not real intense for a piece of property, uh, especially for a property the size that this is. Uh, so with that, um, I will turn it over to the petitioner uh, if he has any additional uh, questions, comments, uh, keep in mind that because this is a rezoning request, it does require a public hearing. Right. Would the petitioner please come to the podium? <coughs> Would you give your name and address for the record? 
Yes, good evening, uh, Mike Shamami. The address of the parcel is 25810 12 Mile Road in the city of Southfield. Anything additional you'd like to add, Mike? We know we've talked to you in the study sessions and Jeff has gone over it, but is there anything additional you'd like for us to know? Um, pretty much what's there. I think, uh, you know, we've went back and forth quite a few times and pretty much what we have listed there, we think we can probably work with something that uh, would fit on those conditions and hopefully maybe, you know, put a development on the site. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You may be seated. Question, thank you. This is a public hearing. I now declare the public hearing open. If there's anyone that would like to discuss this issue, please come to the podium at this time. Seeing none, I now declare the public hearing closed. Commissioners, questions, concerns, comments? <clears throat> Commissioner Huntington. Okay, through the chair. Uh, I think this is a good use of conditional rezoning. Uh, it kind of fits in with the master plan and the low density as far as the zoning and what's in the area around it right now. So uh, it kind of gives the city protection against what could go there with normal zoning. So I think the conditional zoning is it's really a good idea for this piece of property. It's going to fit well with that area. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Griffiths. Uh, I think. This was an example of a leftover residential piece of property in an area where there's no other single family houses around it. So it doesn't make sense with the, the old zoning of single family residential. It's a little bit under that one acre threshold uh, that's been established for the typical rezoning process, but with the conditional, the uses that you specified, the, the size of the site, the, I think the intensity is really controlled from our point of view. The, we're going to have a chance to review any new developments that you propose on the site. You're across the road from many busier developments and other medical office buildings, so a small medical office building makes a lot of sense right on 12 Mile Road. So I think this is a, a great example of, of when a conditional rezoning is appropriate for a, essentially an obsolete piece of, piece of land that we can actually put an asset for the community on, on that site in the future. Commissioner Willis? No, I'm not sure if I had a comment other than support uh, to uh, Brother Co uh, Councilman. The, um, the one acre rule that we use, I think it's something to be held and, be, and paid close attention to. Uh, this is a very close um, situation for me because we, uh, so we looked at the one acre rule so much, but I do think this is the appropriate use for this particular property at this particular time. Let me say, uh, what we try to do is we make sure we are consistent in what we do and we do follow the rules. Mike, let me say this to you from this uh, commission. We appreciate all the effort that you put forward. We know you reached out to the surrounding people and also the person that owned it and try to get some communication to procure that uh, piece of property because all it is is a confirmation of getting that extra acre to make it a complete acre. So again, thank you for all the hard work you did in trying to make that a secure property. And again, I agree with the commission. We, are, we look at everything very intensively and we want to make sure that what we put there is the right thing. And I think this is the proper place, like Commissioner Griffith said, for that uh, special use. So I'm in definite support of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions? Mr. Spence, do you have a recommendation for us? Yes, I do. Uh, with regard to PZR 17-0006, conditional rezoning request uh, of Mike Shimami, uh, the planning department recommends favorable consideration uh, to rezone 0.59 acres of property from R1 single family residential to OS office service with a conditional rezoning agreement for the following reasons. Southfield Comprehensive Master Plan indicates low density multiple family use for this property. The change in use in zoning with the attached conditional zoning agreement would allow for low intensive uses that would be compatible with the existing adjacent land uses and abutting existing developments. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Commissioner, you've heard the recommendation of the planning department. May I have a motion, please? Yes. Commissioner Mia? I'd like to make a motion that we accept the favorable uh, condition PZR 17 
0006. Second. There's a motion by Commissioner Mia, supported by Commissioner Willis, that we approve PZR 17-006 favorable. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Mike, and good luck with the council. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you, thank you, and good luck. Okay, Mr. Spence, uh, now we'll move into the site plan when you're, yep, when you're available. Give me a moment here. Take your time. Well, the next item on your agenda uh, are, is under site plans. Uh, the next item is PSP 18-0005. And let me kind of click through my presentation here to get to that point. Uh, this is the site plan review request of Calabat Engineering on behalf of the owner InStream PM for the construction of 30 condominium units and eight buildings and nine detached condominium units on vacant property located on the east side of Lasser Road north of Dunscotus. Uh, as you can see by the, the presentation that's on the screen, this particular piece of property is on the, the north uh, east corner of Dunscotus and Lasser Road. Uh, it's currently vacant property. Uh, the property, as you can see, does have a, a couple of houses on either side of it to the north and to the south uh, along Lasser Road. Uh, but the balance of the property would be uh, inset a little bit from Lasser Road and on Dunscotus. Uh, this is a layout of the proposal. Uh, if you recall, uh, the planning department did have some uh, conditions that we did ask the petitioner uh, to add to this particular property uh, that included a sidewalk. Uh, the sidewalk is shown on the south side of the, of the, uh, the proposed driveway. Uh, I do note there are questions with regard to getting a, a fire truck on this property. Um, the fire department did look at this particular site and as you see on the easternmost uh, part of the property, there is what appears to be well, generally what we call like a hammerhead. Yeah. It does give them the opportunity to pull in, to back up, and then come back straight toward Lasser Road once again. Um, tree, uh, trees, or as you recall, there are a number of trees on this property It would require a tree permit. Uh, the city council would be the one who would issue that tree permit. If they approve the site plan, they approve the tree permit for the property itself. Um, this kind of gives you an indication of the style of the buildings that are being proposed. Uh, the one on the left is the, the single family house uh, units. The one uh, on the left, the one on the right, uh, is the condominium units. Um, you also do, at least within your, your packets or from the plans that you had earlier, uh, have elevations of the buildings themselves as well. Existing conditions, again, as I noted, uh, the property is vacant. Currently zoned RT single family residential on the north portion, and then R1, I'm sorry, RT attached single family on the north, and then along Dunscotus, R1 single family. Thank you. It does meet all the requirements for parking. parking. Um, it does uh, require some waivers. Um, based on the calculations within the zoning ordinance, um, the number of acreage, the amount of acreage that's required for this particular piece uh, for this project, 5.14 acres. Uh, they do have 4.92, so it would require a 0.22 acre uh, waiver from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, in addition, uh, the height of the buildings. Uh, if you recall, uh, within our zoning ordinance, the, the maximum height in single family residential is uh, 25 feet. Uh, they are up to 26 and a half feet on the buildings. So they would require a waiver of 1.6 feet uh, from the Zoning Board of Appeals for building height as well. Thank you. Would the petitioner please come to the podium, please? You, you, sorry, would you finish, Mr. Bench? I'm sorry. No, nope, you're done. Okay. Um, do you give your name and address for the record, please? Yep, uh, Iden Calabat of Calabat Engineering. Business address is 31333 Southfield Road, Suite 250 in Beverly Hills, Michigan. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, pleasure to be here with you all again. Um, 
believe that uh, this is a, a development plan that we've we've worked on for the last couple of months to together back and forth. I think we've we've approached and have a plan here that uh, a great development for the future of the city of Southfield. Uh, it's, as you all know, this is one of the first residential developments of its character and size uh, to come into into the city here for for quite a while. Um, so it's uh, and, and as we've discussed previously that the style and uh, of the homes and the attached condominiums and the single family homes are more g geared towards um, an aging community with first floor master bedrooms and ranch style homes. Um, so I think that we've uh, we've got a great development here and here to answer any other questions that you guys may have um, and hope to, to get this thing rolling and, and move forward. Commissioner's questions? Concern, comments? I do have a comment. Commission. I'm sorry. Commissioner, Commissioner <laughs> Willis. <laughs> Thank you. I do have a comment, and I think it took a second drive for it to hit me, and that is the, the, the way the houses are in conformity to the houses across the street south of Dun Scotia. I, I was impressed with that. It took a second time to see it. Um, so I just wanted to give you kudos because it stays in conformity. It doesn't look like now you have a new subdivision next to an old subdivision. So uh, I thank you for that. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, you may comment about the numerous times we've met. Yeah, what we do is we want to make sure that uh, what you present to us that we can live with and it fits the uh, master plan and fits the vision of the city. That's why you came back so much. Uh, let me say, uh, personally, I uh, thank you for what you've done. We've asked you to look at uh, different situations with the two neighbors that's in the back and uh, two of our neighbors did come to one of our study session and made a couple of statements and uh, I hope you address that. Uh, after Commissioner Huntington makes his speech, I got one last thing I want to make sure that we definitely clear up when this goes from us to the uh, council. want to make sure we definitely cover this point. But at this point in time, we'll take uh, Commissioner Huntington. Okay. Uh, I think it's uh, great to see new modern condos, you know, going up in Southfield. A uh, little disappointed that it was a little more green initiative uh, kind of into the plans. Maybe a little solar, uh, wallless, water tanks, just a little bit more. Uh, there's so many new products out here right now and building techniques. Uh, it would be nice to see a little bit more of the new, more modern building techniques. And maybe even the use of universal design where we talked about having some of these units handicapped accessible. And I think just using universal design would have uh, kind of took care of the problem for everybody where it wouldn't look like it was made for someone that's physically challenged but could use it both for anybody that's aging uh, with the wider doorways, zero thresholds, what have you. So uh, that's my only really disappointment but as far as the project itself. I think it's laid out nice, it looks nice, and I think you're going to do well here in Southfield. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Denson. Thank you. Hello, how you doing? I'm well, how are you? Um, and you're right, we have been back and forth in terms <laughs> of the um, meetings and the um, site plan. I wanted to just um, re reiterate what's the, um, the issues with the basins. And, and how you are going to address that. With the, uh, would you clarify, with the detention basins yeah, you, yes. you were concerned with? Okay, so um, I think over, overall there's, we've identified that currently as the properties adjacent to a stand, there is an existing issue with the drainage on those properties. Um, that, that issue is not the result of any development that has arose from this property. It's kind of a characteristic of the land of those two properties and, and the way it is. Um, one of the things that we are conscientious of and are going to make sure um, in conjunction with the City of Southfield's engineering department is that we don't adversely impact that current existing condition there uh, for those adjacent property owners. So the detention pond is uh, sized adequately uh, and generously to accommodate um, a 100-year storm event, which would be, you know, your 1% probability 
of a, of a storm occurrence. So it's a, it's a high volume storm event that you're going to see, you know, very rarely. Um, so these are, these are your big flood storm events that we're talking about. Um, and that detention pond is sized uh, and accordingly to withhold that water uh, and discharge it appropriately out to the Dunscotus system. Um, also, we've graded that back corner of the property to make sure that uh, we maintain a high point of the property at the property line and none of the water in that basin would be allowed to overflow into and across the property line. It, it would all be contained in that, in that detention basin, the volumes and the calculations that we have that we will absolutely need to go through detailed um, reviews with the, the engineering department and the engineering consultant to ensure that uh, none of our stormwater detention or stormwater management practices adversely impact the surrounding neighbors. So um, I, I appreciate the, the commission's concern. I know that is, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a sensitive issue, especially when you have it in a pre-existing condition. Uh, we have to always be mindful and responsible as, as developers to make sure that any time we uh, develop a property that we don't adversely impact the surrounding properties around us. Um, but I, I do want to assure you that the, the regulations and the requirements that we have um, from a stormwater management perspective with the city of Southfield and a lot of communities uh, in and around Oakland County due to you know, recent legislature for you know, uh, stormwater management practices are geared towards avoiding those types of issues. So the regulations have already been implemented. Um, we have to adhere to those design criteria. Those de design criteria are set to a, uh, a level of safety, that, a factor of safety that ensures that we're you know, overly protected from, from things like this happening. Um, and it really is going to come down to our detailed engineering design with, uh, with the city engineering department to make sure that we adhere to that and stick to it. Commissioner Griffiths. Uh, I was going to comment along those same lines right. of this is a vacant site that's been there undeveloped for a long time. And you have to bring it up to the current codes when you do this development. So you don't even have a choice to right. affect your neighbor's properties. So I think that's, that's always a good thing. It's, I, th I think the site layout was, was appropriate. It wasn't too greedy. It wasn't too intense. You were able to fill in the subdivision on, on the existing street to the south. And, and have a, a good condo development, which made more sense to enter and exit off of Lasser Road. So I, I was pleased with the layout. Um, and I think you, you spoke a little bit about the potential to do some handicap accessibility features as the units are being built and purchased, pre-purchased even. Um, so I think there's some good flexibility built in there. Um, it's, a, it's a good size new residential development that I haven't seen in, in the city in quite a while. So those are all good good things. Um, I guess one of the, the points, the positives outweigh the, the slight negative of being just under the threshold for five acres. To me, it's, the trade-off is, is worth it. Um, I think just in general, the, the building height maximum in, in our zoning ordinance is, is too low. It's, it's antiquated. It's before we had to have higher energy efficient roofs and higher pitched uh, roof slopes and all the, the modern design features. So it's it's a 1960s 412 roof pitch um, leftover, I think antiquated zoning ordinance piece that we should, we should um, update. Um, and then I guess the other thing is, I think it's a nice looking project. My only criticism is it's, it's a little bit safe. You know, it could have been a little more edgy, more contemporary design, but you've, it's a nice looking project. I think it's, it's gonna be good benefit overall. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Mia. Yes. Is there any possibility if we just say we get a deluge of water and it constantly rains for a whole week, will that, will that hold? Will that pond hold? And is there any type of maintenance on that pond for so long? How long does it last? So the, the intent of the design is to utilize a, a pump system. So we're, we're not um, uh, constrained by a gravity fed system. So one of the advantages to that, it's a more expensive, more costly system. It does require a little bit more maintenance, but one of the advantages of that is when you do find yourself in a, in a situation like you brought up, which is uh, you know, extremely rare when you have yes. what we would call in engineering, we'd have back-to-back 100-year -back storm events. 
that pump would be working overtime to continuously pump out the water as it's coming in. So we'd be, sent, and from a pure engineering standpoint, the downfall to that is the downstream systems that we are dumping into, being the storm system on Dun Scotus, and which then ties into the storm on Lasser Road, is going to be experiencing large volumes of water. Um, but the thing to keep in mind is that in, an, in a storm event like that, where you have a back-to-back 100-year -back storm event, none of the infrastructure or properties around us are really built to withstand that. To be, you know, it's going. They're all going to flood just a little bit, and over time, that's going to dissipate. Um, so this property will will act accordingly as well. Uh, one of the advantages this property has is it has a pump system, a mechanical system that's going to pump that additional water out at a, at a higher rate than what a gravity system would be able to uh, to do with just the force of gravity. So this property would would actually handle those situations a little bit better than most of the other properties around us. Um, but the reality of, of in that situation, you're going to see flooding along all the main streets. You're going to see flooding around you know every neighborhood house, whether they're adjacent to this property or a mile down the road is going to have some, some flooding during that type of event. So um, that's a situation that unfortunately we, you know, we, it's, it's beyond the limits of reasonable design criteria for us to, to withstand against. But um, I would say that the mechanical system would, would perform better than a gravity fed system. And then also, uh, I'd like to, I agree also with the other commissioners. This is a wonderful project and I agree with Commissioner uh, Griffiths. It, it, could have made it a little more edgy. You could have done a little more, but it looks nice. I, I like uh, the gables. You have multiple gables, partial gables, as opposed to just a plain flat roof or, you know, the, the pitch is a low pitch. You have several gables, and I think that makes it look nice. I like that. Aesthetically, it's really pleasing. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, let me say, uh, like I said, my point that I was going to come back on, uh, Commissioner Denson and Commissioner Griffiths did touch on it. We talked extensively in our study session about that pond. Now, what we do not want is anything to come back to the city council about that pond. And understanding that if that pond goes bad or something overflows, there's an automatic sensor that goes to someone. And then there's someone in that subdivision that also triggers. Now, I don't know if that's in your bailiwick, but we gotta make sure that the people and that resident knows that if that pond overflows by any stretch of the imagination, there are two triggers. Yep. One goes to the maintenance to the, company. To the yep. maintenance company, and the other one goes to a resident. Correct. Because what we don't want is someone in that pond to overflow and overflow, and everything happens in that vicinity, and then they come back to the city council if the city council approves this and say, so We weren't told about this pond, we had a flood or something. So I don't know if it's in your bailiwick, but we need to make sure that when this property is sold, that the buyers know everything and anything about that pond and what they're supposed to do. Absolutely, and uh, part, of, part of their packet when they purchase one of these units is going to be the, the condominium documents. And that information is gonna be detailed in that condominium document as to uh, what the maintenance routine, routine maintenance practices are uh, and who's, supposed, who's responsible for performing them, and then who's responsible for monitoring and controlling that aspect of it. So every, every purchaser will be aware of that right. when they purchase. And the second point of it is that the uh, two residents that did come to our meeting, one of the concerns was in the back of that retention pond, I think, hope you said you were gonna put a bird there or something there. Yeah. Okay, although it's the drainage and that problem is on their property, we understand that, that standing Correct. water. Yep. in your area on your property you are going to put a bear or something back behind that pond correct so correct. that water will drain out correct okay. yeah so that that between the pond and the property lines the ground will be sloped up so that any water will be promoted to come yeah. into okay. the pond Good. yes yeah and i agree uh with with the uh, council that property has been vacant and uh, to me this is an area that needed something like this you yeah. you have a choice of where you want to go and we have some ltu uh, for faculty and other people around that would love this and I, I appreciate it and getting back to the uh, we talked about the uh, handicap 
we realize that once you buy a property, it's up to the resident to put in the handicap or whatever. But we did want people to have an idea. And we know it's costly to whoever purchased the property, but we wanted them to see what it would look like if they were handicapped and needed handicap accessibility. So we appreciate that. Absolutely. Commis Commissioner Martin. When do you plan on putting the pump in? With the first building being purchased or at the end? Prior, prior to any buildings being put first into place. Building. Yeah, when, when the infrastructure, when the storm infrastructure is put into place, when the road is built, uh, the pond will be as well built and the pumps all in place. So everything will be in place prior to any of the homes being completed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's usually it usually goes in with our uh, infrastructure work, so it's it's one of the first things that gets done for the property. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Commissioner Denson. Thank you. Um, the um, condos. Um, can you tell us um, about the um, price point? that you expect and the um, um, homeowners association fees uh, approximately I know it's not in yeah I, I, to be honest with you I wish I wish I had one of the owners here I know we we kind of had them in some of the study meetings and they've given a better a better understanding of the price point and the condo association fees um, I would say that the price point is and, and I'm recalling off of memory from what they had answered because they're a lot more qualified to speak to that than I am. Uh, it was about 180 to $200 a square foot um, price point. And, and Commissioner Griffiths, I, you're a little more knowledgeable on this than I am as well, too. You, you can see if that That's is in line. Probably yeah, maybe a little upper end. but little upper end, yeah. And, and again, I, it's not my department to, to speak towards directly, um, but I would say they'd be competitively priced to new construction of that caliber within the greater region here. And I would say that uh, your condo association fees are going to be uh, maybe slightly elevated just because you have a mechanical system with your detention pond. Um, but it's going to be very similar to most other condominium developments that are newer modern condominium developments that have a storm detention system or management system as well in place. Um, Yeah, if I may through the Mr. chair. Spence. Yeah, um, with regard to the question that Dr. Denson asked, it probably would be good to, once we get past uh, the planning commission and then onto the council, to have that information available uh, for, for our study meeting, uh, which will be in December. With the city council? Yeah, yes. we'll have that ready. And again, it's just that we, we, you know it might be an estimate, but it should maybe give you a ballpark to better from very by itself with the price point. Absolutely. Okay. Commissioners, any other questions? Uh, may I have a motion, please? No, oh, Jeff, sorry. Jeff? Yes, thank you. Uh, with regard to PSP 18-0005, the site plan review request of Calabat Engineering, uh, the planning department recommends favorable consideration of the site plan review request for the construction of eight buildings with 30 condominium units and nine condominiums fronting on Dunscotus with the following conditions. Approval of the tree removal permit by the City Council. Landscaping shall be installed in accordance with the attached landscape plan, sheet L-1.0. Petitioner is to provide a sprinkler system for all landscape areas to encourage preservation of plant material. Petitioner is to execute a perpetual maintenance agreement for the landscaped and parking areas, both on site and in the right-of-way, which includes maintenance of the stormwater detention system. Petitioners to implement the recommendations made by the Southfield Police Department's Crime Prevention Bureau regarding site security. The building shall be constructed in accordance with the elevations represented on sheets A3, A4, A7, A8, A11, A12, A14, A15, A17, A18, A20, and A21. Exterior lighting will be shielded to prevent spillage of glare onto adjacent properties. Bike rack shall be installed in accordance with Article 4, Section 5.29, Paragraph 12. And the site shall be designed and developed to contain public works of art in accordance with Section 5.22-5, Public Art, Article 4, General Requirements of the Zoning Ordinance, unless exempted based upon written stipulation. Thank you. 
Thank you. Commission, you've heard the recommendation of the planning department. May I have a motion, please? Yes. Um, Commissioner Mia? I'd like to make a motion that we accept PSP 18-0005 site plan review for Calabat Engineering. Support. The motion by Commissioner Mia, support of Commissioner Huntington, that PSP 18005 be accepted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you and good luck with the council. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay. <coughs> Jeff, we'll give you a few minutes to get set. Yep. Okay, next item on your agenda is PSP 18-0008. Take a look at that. Uh, this is a site plan review request of BD&E Group for the construction of a new gas pump canopy along with other site amenities, property 20041 West 12 Mile Road. Uh, we are on the southwest corner of Evergreen Road and 12 Mile Road. Uh, so this particular property, I'll kind of zoom in, uh, currently has a small canopy uh, that's located along 12 Mile Road. Uh, as you can see just south of that, there's an additional pump uh, that doesn't have the same uh, protection that the other one does uh, for patrons who will be using the gas pumps. But what the uh, petitioner is looking to do would be to increase the size of that gas pump uh, canopy. Uh, the existing one is shown in the green and then the new one is indicated there on the plan as, as new canopy. So we're a little bit more than doubling the size of the existing canopy uh, to provide additional protection. Uh, the construction of, of new uh, concrete pump islands would be done as well. We would also provide for some additional site amenities. Uh, that includes a pedestrian path from uh, Evergreen Road over to the existing building. That would be striped out as well as an accessible route from the uh, access aisle for the barrier free space, uh, which is along the west property line, uh, to the front entry, uh, in this case to the, the ramp that's there. Uh, in addition, the petitioner will be looking at an upgrade to the existing building uh, with brand new roof and then uh, a new facade, uh, both on the north, uh, the east, and the west side of the, ex of the existing building as it stands. Uh, will require a, a waiver. Uh, the original um, canopy did have a waiver uh, for it, but because, it, because of the size of the brand new uh, canopy, we wanted to make sure that we went to the Zoning Board of Appeals to, to get a, a new waiver for, uh, for setback for, the build, for that particular canopy. Uh, within the B3 General Business District uh, for a gas station, uh, any building for gas station has to be a minimum 40 feet back from the property lines. Uh, so because this particular canopy is to be built six feet from 12 Mile Road, we do need a 34 foot waiver of canopy, uh, of building setback for the canopy there. Is the petitioner in the audience? You come to the podium and give your name and address for the record, please. Hello, Commissioners. Hi. Habib Shamami, 12 and Evergreen, 20041 West 12 Mile Road. Habib, is anything you'd like to add to all the numerous study sessions we've been in with you in this? <laughs> mm, not much, really. Just basic that uh, remodeling the station, put a new tank in the ground, new concrete, new pumps, and a new canopy, and do the facade on the building. Commissioners, any questions, comments? Commissioner Mia? Uh, the pump on the, the one side there, are you going to keep that one pump that you're not going to put a canopy on? Is that one pump going to stay on the side there? I'm thinking to remove it out of there, not, not just to have nothing there, just to keep it open. There will be more room to, for everybody. Okay. Sounds good. Habib, let me say uh, uh, thank you. Uh, for that corner. Uh, I know you've got the station across the street and you've got an award on that station, but uh, you have uh, on your side some of the cheapest gas in the city and uh, you've done a good job on uh, 
that uh, outside. I mean, you've gotten, uh, it looks good. Uh, as we talked earlier, I, the only sad part about it, and I'm just sorry that you don't have that property that's in between you and the, uh, the mall because, uh, again, I'm, that needs some work, but that's not yours. I yes. brought that up. So let me say uh, you are concerned about your customers. You are concerned about the residents. You're trying to put some up there to get them some shelter in bad weather. So that's an asset. And then finally, you're doing something to the outside of the building, which will even make that corner much better. And my question to you is, when you go to the council, and if the council approved this, and you start putting that canopy up, is that those pumps going to be closed? Are you going to maybe continue, when they put the canopy over the pumps, are you going to close down the pumps? Yes. The pumps will be closed? The, and all you'll be the whole station with? probably will be closed for about a month, oh, or okay, so 20, three month. weeks to a month. Well, unfortunate business. But again, let me say I appreciate you for doing what you do for the system. Oh, the appreciate system. you. Okay. Thank any, you. Any other questions? Yeah. Commissioner Griffiths? I uh, just appreciate you improving a little bit of a right. tired station. Yeah. and. You know, the existing site layout is what it is. You're constrained. So to me, the waivers make sense in this situation. You're, Thank you. It it's, can probably only be a gas station. It's it's a good layout for the gas station. So having the canopy closer to the property line doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. yeah. Commissioner Willis. Thank you. Assuming uh, a favorable approval by council, when do you think you would start? Uh, probably beginning of the spring. Just. It depends on the contractors if they want to start when there's a ton of snow on the ground. Probably not, you know. Probably beginning of March or end of January, February. I, I, you know, I'm not sure exactly, but we'll start as soon as the weather let us start. Mr. Spence, Any, no, no other comments. Mr. Spence, okay. You have recommendations. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, with regard to PSP 18-0008, site plan review requests of BD&E Group for the construction of a new gas pump canopy along with other site amenities, property 20041 West 12 Mile Road, Planning Department recommends favorable consideration of the site plan review request uh, with the following conditions. Uh, setback waiver of 33 feet 6 inches. Uh, 40 feet required, 6 feet 6 inches proposed for the new canopy from 12 Mile Road from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Setback waiver of 4 feet, 40 feet required, 36 provided for the pump canopy from Evergreen Road can uh, property line from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Gasoline pumps, air and water hose stands and other apparatus shall be set back not less than 15 feet from street right of ways. Lighting shall be shielded from residential property. No storage or display of any kind shall be allowed within the street right of way. All display shall be so located so as not to obstruct views of vehicles. There shall be out no outside storage or display of any kind except for display of new merchandise related to the primary use of a gasoline station for retail sale during the operation, hours of operation of the gasoline station. There shall be no parking of any damaged motor vehicles. Landscape shall be installed in accordance with the attached landscape plan. Petitioners provide a sprinkler system for all landscape areas to encourage preservation of plant material. Petitioners execute a perpetual maintenance agreement for the landscape and parking areas both on site and in the right of way, which includes maintenance of any stormwater detention system. Petitioners who implement the recommendations made by the Southfield Police Department's Crime Prevention Bureau regarding site security. Approval of this site plan and or building elevations represented herein does not constitute nor guarantee approval for signage. Separate approval and sign permits must be obtained from the building department for any proposed sign and bike racks shall be installed in accordance with Article 4, Section 5.29, Paragraph 12. Thank you, Mr. Spence. Commissioners, you've heard the recommendation of the planning department. May I have a motion, please? Commissioner Martin. I make a motion that we approve PSP 18 that's 0008. Second. Motion by Commissioner Martin, second by Commissioner Meir, that the proposal is recommended favorably. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank Good you. luck with the uh, council. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> and you do the same, Mr. Uh, Councilman. Enjoy, Enjoy you. your presence.
Uh, Mr. Spence, uh, are you ready? Yep, Thank I you. am. Would you proceed, please? Sure. Uh, next item on your agenda is PSP 18-0010. It's a site plan review request of MGA Architects for, con for the construction. Now, let me give me a moment to get to that. Uh, for the construction of a 348 square foot porch addition to the existing dental office located 20307 West 12 Mile Road. Uh, this particular property is located on the south side of 12 Mile. It's actually just down the street uh, to the uh, west of the project that uh, we just discussed. Uh, it is an existing dental office. Um, the property just recently went through an administrative site plan review. Uh, the plan that you have did indicate uh, on it some items that got approved actually just a few months ago, a lot of site issues. Um, the petitioner had to come before the Planning Commission for the, the small porch addition because it extended into the front yard setback of the building. Um, the setback requirement uh, in that area is, is 16 feet 6 inches and uh, the, the building or the uh, extension actually was at 15 feet, I believe. Uh, let me confirm that. Uh, let, yeah, let me back up on that. So, so the, the, the front yard setback is 22 feet 6 inches and the, uh, the canopy is at 21 feet 6 inches. 21, 6. So it required a one foot waiver from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, because it required the waiver, it required us to come before the Planning Commission and ultimately City Council for a review. Uh, property zoned OS Office Service. This is the, the uh, east side of the building. So you can see that the canopy is there, what would be on your left hand side. Uh, again, it's the, only a small canopy, 348 square feet. And again, the only reason that we're bringing it before you uh, is because it extends into the front yard setback requiring a waiver. Thank you. Is the petitioner in the building? Would you please come to the podium, please? <clears throat> Good evening. Would you give the name and address for the record, please? Yes, uh, my name is Robert Cliff with MGA Architects, 4351 Delamere Court, Royal Oak, Michigan. I'm here tonight uh, to present our request for the waiver regarding the one foot encroachment over the existing front yard setback. Uh, the existing building is non-conforming. So with this complete, my client, Dr. Kostak has bought the building. He's putting his basically million dollar dental practice in three quarters of the building. The remainder of the building will be uh, tenant space for medical dental. There's already a couple tenants in there that are medically oriented. Um, we're doing an extensive remodel of the interior and the exterior, and part, this porch is part of that complete facade renovation. So unfortunately, you know, we put the porch where it needed to be and then just happened to be in a location where it's just a little bit over. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay. Commissioners, uh Comments, questions? Commissioner Honey? Okay. Well, I think it's good that you're uh, putting the canopy up for your employees and guests and what have you. It's always, uh, especially with the Michigan weather, I'm right. sure everyone will appreciate it. Uh, and this is something I think that uh, the whole process could be much streamlined. I don't think this really should go through the whole process as it is right now. And I think that's something we need to look at in the future, how we can streamline something like this and handle it administratively rather than dragging you through the whole process for this one foot here but uh, like I said it's good you updating your project your property and trying to improve it and trying to do good for your employees and guests so All right. good luck to you thank you Commissioner Griffiths same um, it's, it's a nice nice project nice improvements to the building mm -hmm. unfortunate that this couldn't be done administratively and hopefully we can look at streamlining that in the future that's fine so, favor of Commissioner Mia? Yes, uh, ditto. Uh, I was going to say the same thing. Uh, it is aging building and thank you for the updated facade. I think it's going to really look nice. We appreciate that. Thank it's you. a sad old building. Yes, it, it's, it's old and I, yes. I think the facade, the facade update is going to re be really nice. Thank yes. you. 
Well, nothing else need to be said. We talked about this in the study session, but mm -hmm. the process is what it is until we refine it and we tweak it. But thank you a lot and wish you luck uh, going forward. Appreciate uh, it. Yes, uh, with regard to PSP, with regard to PSP 18-0010, site plan review request of MGA Architects for the construction of a 348 square foot porch addition to an existing dental office located 20307 West 12 Mile Road. The planning department does recommend favorable consideration of the site plan review request with the following conditions. A one foot waiver of front yard setback from the Zoning Board of Appeals, 22 feet, uh, six inches proposed, 21 feet, six inches provided. Landscaping shall be installed in accordance with the previously approved landscape plan under PSAP 18-0027. Balance of the site work indicated on sheet SP1 and sheet A-4 was approved per SP, PS, PASP 18-0027 and is subject to that administrative site plan approval. Tishner is to implement the recommendations made by the Southfield Police Department's Crime Prevention Bureau regarding site security. And approval of the site plan and or billing elevations represented herein does not constitute nor guarantee approval for signage. Separate approval and sign permits must be obtained from the billing department for any proposed signage. Thank you, Mr. Pitts. Commissioners, you've heard the recommendation from the plan department. May I have a motion, please? I'd like to make a motion. Commissioner Mia? I'd like to make a motion that PSP 18-0010 site plan review request of MGA architects uh, be accepted. Second. The motion by Commissioner Mia, second by Commissioner Denson. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Pass. Thank you. Thank and you. Good luck. And thank you again for your uh, patience. No problem. Okay. It's all good. Thank you. Okay. At your convenience, Mr. Spence. Okay. The last item on your agenda under site plans this evening, PSP 18-0011. Uh, this is a site plan review request of comprehensive construction services for the construction of a 1,368 square foot carport property located uh, 20 Oak Hollow. This is on the, the Denzo site. Denzo site. Mm -hmm. Right. On the north side of Oak Hollow Drive, west of Telegraph Road. Um, this particular uh, piece of property, and uh, there it is right there, um, is west of Telegraph Road. Uh, off of Denso and off of Ocalo. Uh, this is a, a complex that has actually been uh, there for quite some time. Uh, Denso originally had uh, the large building on the south side of Ocalo, but over the years has solely purchased the other existing buildings in and around that particular complex. Uh, so this is the 20 Ocalo site. Um, the, the proposal is for uh, the carport, which would be on the north side of the existing building, right adjacent to uh, existing barrier-free spaces that are on site. Uh, gives you an indication of existing conditions. Uh, property zoned OS office service. Uh, so that's the 20 Ocalo building. There's the proposal for the, uh, for the carport, uh, as well as a cross-section of what that will look like. Uh, again, kind of similar to the previous project, uh, the reason that this is going through the process is because uh, in the zoning ordinance, uh, any separate building that is more than 1,000 square feet that's not attached to an existing building uh, does require planning commission and city council uh, approval. So that's the reason it's before you this evening is because it's a 1,300 square foot carport and it is over that 1,000 square foot threshold. Thank you. Is the petitioner come to the podium good evening could you give your name and address yeah hi department? I'm Christopher Oliver um, 1613 Ridge Road Highland Michigan it's a carport <laughs> I wish I wish it was more glamorous but you got to ask a question thank you um, if you have any questions of me, I'm yeah. more than happy to a answer them on behalf of Dunzo International. So, Commissioners, any uh, <laughs> questions or comments? Commissioner Martin? I assume that the construction materials and that would be able to support 
a hundred year event of snowfall. <laughs> it's uh, pre engineered for the area. It's uh, a company out of Warren that's built thousands and thousands of these here in Michigan. So, thank you. Okay. Commissioner Huntington, uh, is there lights up under the canopy at all? No, sir. No lights? Okay. Yeah, I think it's a good idea what you're doing for the employees and guests and what have you. So, it's always good to have carports. So. Thank you, everyone. We all appreciate it. Yeah, this particular carport, what they do for each of their buildings that they purchase them is they have a certain number of executives that are in those areas, and a lot of those folks are there throughout the night because they interface with Japan because it's a Japanese-owned company. So they can they a lot of times come out to their vehicles in the middle of the night instead of having to scrape them. The but eight executives in each building typically get those because they're there most of the, their lives. So <laughs> small perk, I guess. <laughs> thank you. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Smith. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, with regard to PSP 18-0011, the site plan review request of comprehensive construction services for the construction of a 1,368 square foot carport property located 20 Oak Hollow. The planning department does recommend favorable consideration of the site plan review request with the following condition. Carport to be constructed in the location noted on sheet S1 and per the details noted on, on sheet 1. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Commissioner, you've heard your recommendation of the planning department. May I have a motion, please? Yes. Uh, Mr. Commissioner Willis. Thank you. I, I move for <laughs> favorable approval of PSP 18 0011. Second. It's been motioned by Commissioner Willis, second by Mr. Martin. The PSP 18-001 get favor approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Good luck and thank you very much. Okay. Jeff, that's finished with the site plans. Uh, may I have approval of the minutes, please? Commissioner Nia? I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes. Uh, the minutes for October 24th. 2018 regular meeting. Support. Motion by Commissioner Mia, supported by Commissioner Huntington, that approval of minutes dated October 24, 2018 be approved. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Jeff, do we have any miscellaneous? Uh, there's no uh, there's no miscellaneous uh, except to say that you do have a study meeting scheduled for next week. Uh, we do have one, one item on the agenda, uh, which should actually go relatively quickly, I believe. Uh, so that's the only uh, further announcements that I have. Okay. Commissioners, uh, any other questions for the planning department? If not, thank you. May I declare this meeting closed.